In this example, we're going to show how the uh, graph of a function can be used to estimate the solutions to an equation. So suppose we're given this equation uh, that we want to uh, solve or estimate solutions for at least. Uh, x cubed minus 6x squared is equal to uh, minus 4x minus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, rewrite uh, this equation so that one side of the equation is zero. Uh, that's fairly easy to do uh, just by uh, adding 4x and 2 to both sides of the equation. So if you do that, the uh, right-hand side uh, will become zero. And so you'll get uh, x cubed minus 6x squared uh, plus 4x plus 2 uh, is equal to zero. So of course, this equation is equivalent to the original equation uh, that we wanted to solve. Uh, both of these equations have the same solutions. So if I can solve uh, the equation set equal to zero, uh, then I know the solutions to the original equation. Now let's imagine a function, uh, and I'm going to call it f, uh, whose formula uh, is the same as uh, the uh, expression on the left-hand side of this uh, equation that we want to solve. So let's think of this function f, uh, whose formula is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 4x plus 2. Now, if you were asked to find the x-intercepts of this function f, well, of course, you would do that by setting the outputs to 0. Uh, so in this case, since uh, uh, we have the formula for the function f, we could try to find uh, the x-intercepts of f by setting its formula uh, to 0. So notice that when you set uh, the formula for the function f to 0, uh, you get exactly the same equation Uh, that we started with that we wanted to solve. So my point being here is that to find the x-intercepts of this function f, you need to solve this equation. And so the x-intercepts of um, uh, the function f are the same as the solutions to this equation that we uh, originally wanted to solve. Now, so at this point, it looks like we haven't made much progress, right? Um, uh, uh, finding uh, the solutions to this equation uh, if we want to think of that as uh, finding the x-intercepts of this function f, well, we're led back to the same equation that we wanted to solve. But uh, there, we have an alternative way now of looking for, or at least estimating, the x-intercepts of the function f. Because we have a, if we have a graph of the function f, we can estimate the x-intercepts by looking uh, on the graph. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Uh, so we've made a graph of this function f. And we can observe uh, uh, the x-intercepts on this graph because, of course, these are the locations where the graph crosses the x-axis. And through these observations, we can make estimates for what the x-intercepts of the function f are. But again, remember, those x-intercepts of the function f are going to be the same as the solutions uh, to the equation that I wanted to solve. So here we have a mechanism for estimating solutions uh, to this uh, original equation. Well, it's pretty easy on this graph here. This is the graph of the function f, so it's pretty easy to see or to estimate what the x-intercepts are. It looks like we have one right here at about minus 1, approximately minus 1, another one here at approximately 2.5, and then a third one over here just a little bit bigger than 4.5, so that would be about 4.6. Ah, So um, there are our estimates for the x-intercepts of the function f, minus 1, 2.5, and 4.6. And so therefore, uh, those uh, x-intercepts for the function f are going to be also estimates for the solutions um, of the original equation that we uh, wanted to solve. So here are our estimates for the solutions uh, to our equation. Again, they're the same as the x-intercepts of this function f, approximately minus 1, and uh, 2.5, and uh, 4.6.